communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome back to Magdala for Mass. Uh, in this moment of our virtual pilgrimage, I think we should definitely call it a real pilgrimage because you are walking through the mysteries of Christ and you are doing quite a few different uh, actions and gestures that are out of the ordinary for you. <clears throat> and the bring it home today is very interesting because we're in Gethsemane at night time praying with Jesus. And the suggestion for bringing it home is to read that gospel passage from Matthew and to turn out the lights and just have a candle burning and to accompany Jesus in that prayer. So this is not just virtual pilgrimage, it's real pilgrimage. And obviously the, the highest point of a pilgrimage, especially for us Catholics, is the moment of the Eucharist. Entering into this prayer of Christ when he gives his body and his blood for us in total availability to the Father. And for that mystery he was wrestling in prayer at this. You might be surprised that we're in this chapel, but there are many reasons to be here. And so we prepare to enter into this mystery with Jesus, into the mystery of his prayer for fidelity. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you heard the humble cry of prayer of your Son, Jesus Christ, oppressed by profound distress in Gethsemane. Taught by the weakness of the apostles, may we learn to conform always to your will. And with a life dedicated to prayer and vigilance, may we obtain freedom from evil. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In those days when Hezekiah was mortally ill, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Put your house in order, for you are about to die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, O Lord, remember how faithfully and wholeheartedly I conducted your, myself in your presence, doing what was pleasing to you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. In three days you shall go up to the Lord's temple. I will add 15 years to your life. I will rescue you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will be a shield to this city. The word of the Lord. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In you, Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety, for you are my rock and my fortress. 
O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth, from my mother's womb, you are my strength. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. Though I know not their extent, O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Be on guard and pray that you may not be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but nature is weak. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and Zebedee's sons, two sons, and began to experience sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My heart is nearly broken with sorrow. Remain here and stay awake with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Still, let it be as you would have it not as I. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me for even an hour. Be on guard and pray that you may not undergo trial. The Spirit is willing but nature is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he began to pray, My father, if this cannot pass me by without my drinking it, your will be done. Once more, on his return, he found them asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. He left them again, withdrew somewhat, and began to pray a third time, saying the same words as before. Finally, he returned to his disciples and said to them, Sleep on now. Enjoy your rest. The hour is on us, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to the power of evil men. Get up. Let us be on our way. See, my betrayer is here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. First of all, I would like to comment why this chapel was chosen. And the idea really was to go to the chapel where Peter is sinking in the water, but we'll need that for later. 
And the, one of the reasons for this particular one is, is very special. Uh, we have palm trees and olive trees, and there's the Garden of Olives, the Mount of Olives. And then we have Satan. And it's very interesting in the Gospel accounts of the temptations in the desert during the 40 days of fasting, when Jesus overcomes the third temptation, it says the devil left him to come back on the appointed time. And the great mystics and saints and great teachers of scripture have always found a very deep connection of that return in Gethsemane. And actually some movies even depict that scene with Jesus crushing the serpent's head. They place a serpent there in the garden where they're filming and there's a snake suddenly and Jesus stamps it out with his heel. Which is then an echo of Genesis chapter 3 when the promise is made to Eve that her seed will crush the serpent's head. It's amazing how all these themes in scripture are interconnected and how it's a language, a vocabulary, an idea process, if we just analyze it from that perspective, that sheds incredible light into the condition of human life. And so in this sense, we once again you know, stumble upon this fact that the mysteries of Christ are our mysteries. And we are praying these mysteries of Christ, they are our mysteries, they are your mysteries. And so it's a very co-natural reality to contemplate these mysteries also through the eyes of Mary, because in a particular way they were her mysteries, because Jesus' mysteries were her mysteries. He was her son. So in this month of October, as we accompany in this age-old tradition of Christians pondering the mysteries of Christ close to Mary, like John was on Calvary, and at other moments also in Pentecost and in other moments, then we can also ourselves appropriate the mysteries, enter into them, be transformed by them. So there's a powerful grace in this pilgrimage for each of us as we do it. There's also a very other interesting feature here, and that's Mary Magdalene. And one of the reasons that really was decisive in getting me to come here. It happened very quickly. In just a moment, about half an hour ago, I figured I was moving the, all the, the Wi-Fi connector over to the other chapel, and I just thought this would be better because we're in a garden, and there's a woman. And Eve gave in to the serpent, but these women of Jesus' community unlike the apostles, did not fail Jesus. They walked with him every step of the way. Somehow Jesus must bring these men close to him because they need to really learn the lessons very close up. They need a lot of transformation. And these women seem already to have had this grace of fidelity this grace of strength. They did not deny Christ. They did not, there's no record of them falling asleep on the job like the apostles do here. Uh, they don't betray Christ. These are extraordinary women that are so deeply transformed by grace, by their encounter with Christ. And that could lead us to another side reflection also during the context of this pilgrimage, but overall in our entire spiritual pilgrimage. How is the grace of Christ penetrating into our lives? There's a word in Spanish, calando. It's like settling in, it's, it's being absorbed, it's transforming 
it's becoming part of our thinking, our attitudes, and it's very difficult for us. We're, <laughs> we're tough pieces to transform. We need a lot of grace. And we could have this request to Christ on the pilgrimage, allow me to enter into your mysteries. Have your mysteries penetrate into my sensitivity, into my mind and my thinking, into my decision processes, into my value system, so that I will be conformed to you. And this is a wonderful grace to request. And it seems to me that by this point in their lives, the women are much further ahead of the disciples of the men. And this would be a grace for everybody to ponder, men and women doing this pilgrimage. How far along am I? Or how easily do I become very different to Christ-like in difficult situations? How easy do I become self-pitiful? How easy do I become angry? How much rebellion lurks in my heart? How much complaint, bitterness, criticism, negativity that needs to be transformed? Weakness, uh, incapacity to be faithful to Christ. So that's a great grace to ask for, and Gethsemane is a great place to ask for it. Gethsemane is an extraordinary mystery. You know, Christ himself in his totality is an extraordinary mystery. He is the great mystery in human history. And that's why he is the point of confrontation of so many questions and so many um, intense followers and intense enemies who want to eradicate his name from the earth. It's really amazing, this intense encounter in Christ. And he is true God and true man. And sometimes we see more the divine, Mount Tabor, the resurrection, walking on the water, calming the storm. And sometimes we see the human more weeping when Lazarus dies, being tired, needing help from Simon of Cyrene, being crushed by the weight of the cross, being the victim of hatreds and uh, persecution, being a refugee, fleeing from Herod the king, um, working hard year after year in Nazareth in a poor economy, in difficult situations, so encountering death and sickness and neighbors that might be difficult, family that might be difficult. It's amazing the humanity of Christ, but in all of his mysteries, he is human and divine. It's just that sometimes we see one in greater light and the other more, more focused upon. And here in Gethsemane, we really encounter Jesus in, in, in the core of his person in the extraordinary reality of his humanity and also in that deep interior core of his divinity, his relationship with the Father. It's, it's so amazing and we will never tire of contemplating Christ there. Gethsemane is an extraordinary site. It's actually, I think, the most frequented site in the Holy Land and are one of them. Uh, so it's always busy with scores of buses, except now, when you saw Kathleen a little while ago doing her video inside the Basilica, you would never have this opportunity. I don't think any of the major media get this opportunity because it's always busy. Even at nighttime, groups go there to pray at nighttime, to join Jesus. When they come on pilgrimage, one of the most coveted moments besides going into the Holy Sepulchre, is to be at nighttime in Gethsemane. In the summertime, it's harder because there's more daylight. In the wintertime, it's a bit easier. And to be there in a full moon, which would have been the occasion of Passover at nighttime, uh, extraordinary moments right in front of the Temple Mount, the place of sacrifice, the shedding of blood. 
And we are very close to that. Our hands get stained with Jesus' blood as we try to remove these, stain, these drops from his forehead. And so we are like the people in the temple at the sacrifice offering the blood of the victim. It's an extraordinary mystery, a mystery of intense prayer. And so that's why I like this reading since the very first time I ever went to Gethsemane about 14 years ago, this reading of uh, Hezekiah in Isaiah. And it's about our own prayer life. Hezekiah was mortally ill. And you know, you just think about it in the last few weeks, how many petitions have you received from somebody who says to you, oh, this young mother is very sick, or this person had an accident, or this kid is in a very bad situation from drugs, or this person has coronavirus, or this person is in intensive care. We get so many of these requests for prayer, and we should, and we should keep praying for them. And so the family is praying very much, and Hezekiah is really up against the wall, literally. He's praying, turns towards the wall to pray. And he begs God for help. He's the king, and he's helpless. He's the king, and he's helpless. And Isaiah tells him, put your house in order. Your time is up. And he begs God. And he was a very devout king. And he says, how faithfully I served you. And he wept bitterly. He was very attached to this life. And then God sent Isaiah to him and said, tell him that your prayer has been heard. I will heal you. In three days you shall get up out of bed and go to the temple. I will add 15 years to your life. And it's amazing. I love this text because from the one side it shows us the power of prayer and the authenticity of a truly praying heart. And we find this in Gethsemane. But in Gethsemane, Jesus' prayer is not answered like Hezekiah. And that's a very big test for us. Maybe that is one of our Gethsemane moments when we are tested. And how many people who have lost a child or whose fortune has really gone sour, and how they lose trust in God. The need we have to trust in God, to be connected with Him, to receive His blessing, and how we have to be carried through moments when our prayers are not seemingly heard. And that young mother dies and our relative dies, and the kid doesn't recover from the drugs yet. And we have to continue with the person that's in coma, and it's so hard. And there Jesus is extraordinary in his prayer. And When you go after Mass, if you want to do that homework, to bring it home, and you light that candle, and you're there in the silence with Jesus, enter into that prayer of Jesus, because there we find a strengthening gift that makes us capable for these moments. It's hard not to go to Gethsemane and not think of the Our Father. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. This is the heart of Christ's prayer. Father, everything that's just in the word when he says, Avi, my Father. Thy will be done, not mine. There is extraordinary spiritual maturity in the soul that's able to pray like that. And this is where we need to grow toward, to be able to get our act together, our memory, our imagination, our bad histories, our good histories, our desires, our ambitions, our relationships, our frustrations, and let all of that be assimilated into one prayer, Thy will be done. And here we can read that beautiful line that's so often repeated, there's a grace in every circumstance. 
and the point of encounter of that grace is thy will be done. This is extraordinary prayer. But the Our Father still speaks to us here because deliver us from evil. All of the pressures that draw us away from God's will. This deliverance from evil. And this must have happened very radically in Mary Magdalene, that she is so free to be faithful to Calvary. And these men still need a lot of purification. Let us pray that prayer very profoundly for our own persons, for our closest family members, for those we know and care for, and for our country, for our people, for our communities, for our church, for every, every instance of human life and society. Thy will be done. Deliver us from evil. To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed. For his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We pray for the Holy Church of God that the Lord may graciously watch over for her, <clears throat> deliver her from evil, strengthen her to do his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of the world who have strayed in part or very far from God's will, that they would be blessed to be renewed interiorly and recover their fidelity and be freed from evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are oppressed by any kind of need, personally or in their family, in their community, in their country, that the Lord may graciously grant them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And now we pray for the intentions that each of you have in your hearts, in your homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our offerings, O oh Father, be pleasing to you. Look upon the face of your consecrated one, Jesus our Lord, who sacrifices himself for us, eternal victim of propitiation. Kindly hear the petitions we present in his name and make us vigilant and cleansed from all sin. This we ask through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Serpa was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Pierre Battista, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. Blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Body of Christ.
Jesus, thank you for coming close to us and for bringing us close to you. And you took your disciples close to you to see your struggle in prayer. And they were themselves tested. And failed. But your prayer won your fidelity and their fidelity because they would be so transformed as to give their lives completely to you transformed over years and years of discipleship to the point of martyrdom in different countries and different cultures through different tortures Lord, we are grateful for this mystery, showing us your heart. Your humanity crushed under sorrow, and yet faithful to the Father. Able to say yes. Lord Jesus, enable us to say yes, to be faithful faithful to our vows, faithful to the people in need around us, especially a spouse going through difficulty, an aging parent, a very difficult child, a problematic neighbor or work colleague. Jesus, help us as we go through our trials. Make us strong to become more like you. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I hope in you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I adore you. Let us pray. All-powerful God, you have nourished us with the bread of life. May we, with the help of your Holy Spirit, assiduous in humble prayer like your Son, and participants in his sufferings, prevail over the enemies of our salvation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.
So thank you very much for joining us today again in prayer, building this great pilgrimage all together on our path, helping each other, praying for each other. This is one of the great beauties of pilgrimage and to experience that we are not alone. One of the big trials of Gethsemane is the loneliness. And really we can never escape loneliness. Loneliness is where we have to arrive at some point to be just in front of God. And it's there we have this great encounter with God. But on the other hand, we're also a community in Christ. And we support each other. And we support each other through prayer and through example, through an effort to follow deeply in our faith. So thank you for joining the pilgrimage. And don't forget to bring it home and light that candle. Turn off the lights if you can. And have your time of prayer alone. Not just to listen to Kathleen on the pilgrimage, to pray at the Mass is wonderful, but also to have those times alone with God. God bless you.